Storytelling is possible from your Lightroom for mobile photos. You can access them directly in Adobe Slate or send them directly to Adobe Premiere Clip. Our photos tell our stories. By capturing and saving your photos in Lightroom, whether from your mobile device, desktop, or the web, you can access them in great storytelling apps like Adobe Slate or Premiere Clip to tell your stories. So here I have a collection called A World Traveler. And in this collection, I've got various photos that I've taken around the world. I've also got a subset of those photos in a different collection called A World Traveler Europe. So no matter which collection I'm in, I can start the storytelling process directly from Lightroom for mobile. I can tap the share icon in the upper right hand corner and I get the option to create in Slate or create a video in Clip. If I say create in Slate, that'll take me over to Adobe Slate where I get the option to scroll through and preview inspirational stories taken by other photographers. And these stories are all ultimately HTML5 web pages. So I can view any of these stories here in Slate or on the web. When I'm ready to create my own Slate, I just tap create a new story. And at that point, I can go in and now tap to add a title. If you want to use your on-screen keyboard, you can, or you can use an external keyboard like the one I have here on my iPad Pro. So I'm just going to go ahead and type in a world traveler. And once I've typed it in, I'm going to go ahead and add a subtitle. The subtitle, of course, is optional. And also, you'll notice at the very bottom, there's a plus sign. When I tap that plus sign, and any time you tap that plus sign, you'll get to add a new element to your story in Slate. So I'm going to tap to add a photo. And here's the best part about Adobe Slate. I can not only add my photos from the device or my Creative Cloud folder, but I can add them directly from my Lightroom for mobile photos. So here are the same two collections at the top that we looked at a moment ago. And I can add a photo such as my Denmark photo, which makes a nice background photo for the cover of my story. Now at the very bottom, it says scroll to start writing your slate. And when I scroll up, I get the option to not only add another photo or text, a hyperlink, a photo grid, or a glide show. So in this case, I want to add text. I'm going to go in and type my text. And I get the option, of course, to format that text. I can select it and I can make it bold or italic with the buttons at the top of the screen. But you also get some buttons like H1 and H2 that make it a nice headline title for the web. So that's now traveling the world in a nice big font, nice and clean and crisp. And um, I, of course, can tap the plus sign either above it or below it to add the same types of elements that we talked about before. So, of course, I can add more text or just simply hit return to get more text. And I can begin typing that text or best of all, I can paste it in if I've already created it somewhere else. So I'm going to do just that. I'm just going to tap and tap paste and paste in the text that I had previously typed in another app. Now, at this point, I can go in and again, tap the plus sign one more time. Let's go ahead and create a photo grid. And a photo grid is a grouping of photos for a specific purpose. So in this case, we're talking about structures and monuments. So I'm going to do the Eiffel Tower. We'll do the uh, Sphinx from Egypt. We'll do the uh, Big Ben. We'll put it next to the Turning Torso. And let's see, we've got the Freedom Tower here and the Statue of Liberty. Now, at any given time, I can switch the order just by tapping the arrow left or right to move them around. And if I'm done, I just tap Done in the upper right-hand corner, and that gives me um, my photo grid. So now, once this is on the web, anyone can tap on any one of those photos and see them larger. And of course, at the very bottom, I get the option to add a caption or the option to continue telling my story. Now, let's try the Glide Show. With the Glide Show, it's best probably for your uh, landscape-oriented photos. So I've got a nice picture here of the Eiffel Tower, the cannons in London. Uh, we've got the Amsterdam photo here. And we've got, let's see, Brooklyn Bridge. So let's put those in. And of course, I can still move those around in order as well, just by using the arrows to move them around. And then once I'm done, you'll see what a glide show is. It actually glides the photos and zooms them and transitions them nicely as the person scrolls the screen. Now, these little boxes that are coming up give you the option to add a caption. So if I tap the plus sign here, 
I can go ahead and hit the letter A and I can add something like Amsterdam. So if you didn't know where that was, I can add it in and you can even add more like a, a text or more text and a photo. So let's keep going. That gets me to the end of my story so far. And of course I can add any one of these elements and just keep going. But let's try the hyperlink since we haven't done that one yet. And I'm gonna just simply say, see more of my photography. And then I can put in the hyperlink of where you can see more of my photography. And once I'm done, I can tap done, and then that becomes a link on the page. Now, at any given time, I can tap the preview button in the upper right-hand corner and preview the story the way it would look on the web. And if I didn't put a caption in on the Glide Show, the gray boxes go away, which is kind of nice. But where I did put a caption, the caption is there. And then, of course, we get to the end where I can, of course, see the hyperlink. Now, I'm going to tap close because at this point, I'm ready to either continue editing or share my story. Once I tap the share icon in the upper right hand corner, I can make it public like the other photographers did. So maybe it gets featured or I can keep it private. Once I hit continue, that will upload everything to the Adobe servers uh, using Creative Sync. And then it will then give me the option to copy that URL, which it's already done by the way, to the clipboard. And I can now share that to anyone in the world so they can view it on any device connected to the internet. Now that's great, but let's tell our story in another way. So I'm gonna go back to Lightroom for mobile. And in Lightroom for mobile, I've got that other subset of the collection, uh, a world traveler, Europe. So from here, what I'd love to do is create a video using these photos. So I'll tap the share icon. And once again, in Lightroom for mobile, I can go directly to create a video and clip. Once I say create a video and clip, it will automatically take me over to clip it will add the photos and it will even put them on a sample soundtrack. Best of all, it synced the photos to the beat of the music automatically. I didn't have to do anything extra. Now, if you don't like that particular soundtrack, you can replace it with a different one. These are all royalty free, the ones that are built into Adobe Premiere Clip. So if I like, for example, Particle, I can go ahead and add Particle instead and it will resync the photos to the beat of the music. And of course I can preview that and see what that sounds like or looks like, but I kind of want to do a little more editing. The uh, built-in ability to just do it automatically is awesome. And of course, replacing the soundtrack is great. And even being able to use my own playlist artists and songs are awesome. But what if I want to edit it more? So I can tap the little film strip icon in the upper right hand cor corner and switch to the uh, freeform editor. So once I tap convert to freeform editor, now I can do the things that I really want to do, such as perhaps move the photos in a different order to tell the story in the order that I want to tell it in. And more importantly, I want to also add more items. So I can tap the plus sign in the lower right hand corner. I can grab more photos from Lightroom for mobile. I can, of course, add videos as well that may be already on my iPad. But I can also just simply add a title. So if I go ahead and add the title and I type the same title that we did before, a world traveler, and then just tap anywhere on the canvas to lock it in. Now I can simply move that title, of course, to the beginning where I want it to be. And if I tap anywhere on the canvas, I can even shrink that title down. I don't quite need it to be five seconds. Now you notice those little dots that I'm shrinking it down to, those little dots represent the beat markers. So we're still keeping everything in beat with the music. Now, last but not least, we'll tap the little gear icon in the upper right hand corner. We'll say that this fades in from black and it fades out to black. I don't want any cross fades in between the clips because we're kind of keeping this to the beat of the music. And then lastly, I can tap the little icon in the upper right hand corner uh, that goes full screen. And once I go full screen, it will play and I can see it, hear it, and get the feel for my video that I just created telling my story with my photos from Lightroom for mobile directly to Premiere Clip. Now, once I'm done, or if I'm not, I can keep editing, but if I am done, I can tap the little share icon in the upper right hand corner, and I can save this video to my camera roll or even to YouTube and share it any way that I want. 
I invite you to check out the various ways of telling your story with your photos from Lightroom Mobile, which is available on iOS, Android, web, and desktop, by accessing them in storytelling apps like Adobe Slate, which is available on iPad and the web, and in Premiere Clip, which is available on iOS and Android.